Right, everyone, how are we doing? It's uh, Saturday, tomorrow, Sunday, Celtic are at St Mirren Park to take on St Mirren, surprisingly. And what is actually our 10th competitive match of the season? It seems like we've had far more than 10. But after tomorrow, we're going to go into the... I was about to say the winter break there, not quite. We're going to go into our international break. We're going to get some well-earned rest. Of our nine games so far, we've actually won seven. They've all been domestic fixtures. The two European ones we've had haven't been victories. One lost, one drawn. So it seems like there's a real gulf at the moment. Maybe unsurprisingly between domestic matches where we seem just so far ahead of anyone else. I mean, we've already played... Uh, basically the, the league's leading teams, Rangers, Hearts and Aberdeen, beating all three by at least two goals, not even conceding a goal against any of those three. And the European stuff that just seems much more difficult for us to master, understandably. So with that in mind, you would assume that tomorrow against St Mirren would be relatively plain sailing. It may well be, but Ange and the players aren't going to be thinking that way. Tomorrow's trip is actually one of our shorter ones that we'll experience all season. I know some of you love these wee um, Google Earth flyovers. So just 12 miles tomorrow to Paisley from Celtic Park where St Mirren Park is situated. So a nice local one um, for the team and uh, for, I'd say, the vast majority of supporters as well. St Mirren have actually started off the season relatively well. This is what the league table looked like prior to today's 3pm matches. St Mirren were in sixth with three wins and three losses from their six matches. They did manage to win three games in a row, but lost their last match 3-0 at St Johnson. A lot of threes in there. That's also the number of players they play across their back line, which I think, should be interesting. I don't know if there's too many other teams who play a back three against us, so it'll be interesting to see how that kind of matches up against our flair up front tomorrow. But as always, you know, we can chat about St Mirren, their form, you know, their players, but it's all about Celtic. It's all about how we turn up tomorrow. And if, if let's face it, if a kind of, not quite half function in Celtic but certainly like three quarters function in Celtic turns up we have enough quality to probably win the game pretty convincingly tomorrow Ange did actually interestingly mention that he would have made some changes a week ago for the Livingston game had that game actually taken place he said he would have done something similar to what he did in that cup tie away to Ross County he made nine changes that night I'm not sure he would have made nine last weekend, but certainly seems like he would have made um, at least several. I think tomorrow we won't see kind of wholesale changes to that extent, given that it's the final game before the international break. I do think we could see a couple of changes, though. In fact, more than a couple. This is the team that I have gone for. As you can see, players coming in there, Ralston, Abada, and Yakimakis for Juranovic, Haksavanovic, we rhyme there, and Kyogo. I just think those three, in particular, Ralston and Abada and Yakimakis, all have something to prove. Ralston, especially, I feel deserves a, a chance to impress. Um, I'll just read out the team for those of you who don't actually watch the videos and just listen. So I'm going for Joe Hart and goals, Anthony Ralston at right back, Cameron Carter Vickers in the centre with Moritz Jens, Greg Taylor in his role at left back, although it's more in midfield, let's be honest. Callum McGregor, Matt O'Reilly, and Rio Hatati in midfield, Liela Bada on the right, Jota on the left and Jorgios Yakamakis through the middle. Ange was asked about Oliver Abelgaard yesterday. He basically said, um, for me anyway, reading between the lines, that we won't see Abelgaard tomorrow, certainly not for a, a, an extended period of time. He said we'll see more of Abelgaard after the international break, that they're going to use that two-week period to get him up to speed. So he could be an interesting player to watch after the break, but doesn't seem like he's going to have much of a role tomorrow. But even, you know, players not in that starting lineup, off the top of my head, you've got Maida, Turnbull, uh, Kyogo, Haksabanovic, uh, 
Juranovic as well. You know, there's there's players in there who can certainly make an impact off the bench. In terms of other interesting bits from Ange's press conference, you've probably seen it by now. He was asked uh, countless occasions. I think the, the BBC guy had three questions and all of them were surrounding banners and minutes of applause and respect and all of these things and, and really trying to, in my opinion, push Ange into saying something against the Celtic support. Ange dealt with it impeccably. I thought he said he expects the same from the support tomorrow as they always do and basically that's what he went into he said he wouldn't speak for any other support so he just handled that really well he also had plenty of positive things to say when he was asked about Greg Taylor said Greg Taylor's attitude to improve has been brilliant and at only 23 years old he thinks there's so much more improvement in Taylor as well and also some interesting comments from a fellow Aussie Aaron Moy uh, yesterday, I think, obviously, Coldplay as the fan, you know the guy, pretty good footballer as well. He was speaking to the Scottish Daily Mail about the post-match reaction from the players after the draw in Warsaw against Shakhtar Donetsk. Obviously, as supporters, we were, I think, pleased with the, the, the fact that we dominated the game against pretty decent European opposition, but pretty frustrated by the fact that we hadn't won the match and had missed so many chances to to get the goal that would have won as the match. And it seems like the players feel relatively similar. Moy saying it was a bit similar to Real Madrid in that we had good chances and we didn't put them away. And it was a bit disappointing that we didn't get a win. The manager was quite happy. He said the second half was good and that he was proud of us all for giving everything we had. We were just lacking that little bit of the finishing touch we are playing against the best teams in Europe, so every point is well earned, and I think we maybe could have earned a little bit more, but you take a point and move forward. It calms me down to see how Ange is feeling about things. When Ange is a bit kind of worked up and a bit frustrated, I kind of feel the same way, and it's fair to say that since Wednesday, basically since full time on Wednesday when he was shaking hands with his opposite number at Shakhtar, he looked relatively con content, definitely frustrated that we hadn't won the game like the rest of us, but I think Ange feels we are going in the right direction. Yesterday as well, in his press conference, he spoke about the missed chances and believing that it just comes down to a lack of experience at that level. And that just over time, as the players play more Champions League matches, the chances will be taken. And Ange tends to know what he's talking about. So if he's feeling happy, kind of relaxed about the whole situation, then I am too. So yeah, overall, tomorrow, feeling just quite calm about the game. Obviously, the as I said earlier, the players, I think the players are going to be right on it. There's just so much competition for places at the moment and so many big games coming up after the break for players not to be on it. And if Ange does change it up, you know, like he did against Ross County, maybe not quite to that extent, but similarly, you're going to have players coming in, busting a gut to to try and get in Ange's plans for the, the upcoming Champions League games. So I think if the players are just so on it at the moment. As supporters, you know, it doesn't really matter how we feel. I think Ange would say that himself. Um, it, it's hard not to feel a, a little bit complacent going into these games when you've seen us play so well all season and, let's face it, beat better teams in St Mirren pretty comfortably. Going away from home tomorrow um, against the Buddies, you, you do feel relatively secure that Celtic are going to get the business done. Obviously, you never know you know, the variables in a match, refereeing decisions. By the way, I should say referee tomorrow, Don Robertson, David Room and Alan Mulvaney as the assistants in Ewan Anderson is the fourth official. But yeah, you never know. Dodgy penalties, red cards, all of that stuff. It could turn out to be a difficult game tomorrow. But I just think even if it's like neck and neck going into the closing stages, we have the subs on the bench to, to change the game. I think that's the big difference from last season. We're just so strong in every department and there's just such a such momentum going through the squad at the moment with especially in this domestic run maximum points so far from six games chance to make it seven tomorrow wouldn't it be amazing to get through the entire first round of fixtures without dropping a point I mean have we ever done that before I certainly can't remember us ever doing that before certainly not even in the invincible season 
um, we dropped points early on. So, yeah, it's um, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes tomorrow, but I just feel really secure in Celtic. Um, the game is a noon kickoff. It's live on Sky Sports Football and main event, and me and John will be with you afterwards talking about it. So enjoy the game if you're going, if you're watching on telly, and we'll speak to you later.